Father, we bless your name. And we pray even now as the word goes forth that you are glorified, that you are magnified. But Lord, I pray, touch your people's hearts today. Speak to those that need to hear from you today. Father, I pray you give, give me preaching power to preach, Lord, to, to your people, God, so that they can hear from you. But God, I need your power. I need your strength. Lord, I need you to, to calm my mind, soothe my doubts, calm my fears. Yes, sir. Clear my mind. Let my words be concise. Help me to say everything you have me to say. And anything you don't have me to say, remove it from my mind. My prayer, God, is that you're glorified in this moment. Father, I know I'm preaching to your congregation. Oh, but God, my prayer is that you'll be pleased by the time I'm done. Oh, I preach to your people, but God, I do preach to an audience of one. Lord, I pray that you are honored in this moment. Lord, take this two fish and five loaves and bless the masses. Bread of heaven, feed us till we want no more. Lord, we love you. We bless you. We give you glory. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Psalm 46. Psalm 46. Pastor, we've been in Psalm 46 for two weeks now. You're right, and this is the third week. <laughs> This will most likely be the last one, but I said that last time, so we'll see how the Spirit leads. Uh, but we're going to do our best. We're going to do our best. Uh, let's turn to Psalm 46. I'm, a, I'm essentially going to go through all of Psalm 46, but my, my focus is my focus is going to be Psalm, uh, verses 6 through 10. 6 through 10. Um, I pray y'all with me. Are y'all interested in Y'all with me? Uh, I'm not gonna. I, I can only. I can only give it to you the way that God gave it to me. So Psalm 46, six through ten, and it reads like this: The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. We're talking about God. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord. How He has brought desolations on the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Verse 10, we already know it. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Verse 11, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. I want to preach from these words. Trust God with your storm. Trust God with with your storm. Hallelujah. And I need your prayers. Trust God with your storm. And um, I, I, I could, as I said before, I can only give it to you the way that God gave it to me. <coughs> Psalm 46. As we have talked about, uh, and k -Wan, you weren't with us, so I'm going to give you a quick summary then we're going to get right into it. I know you'll follow. Yes, but, but Psalm 46 is, is encouragement uh, that uh, encouragement to us that God is a shelter in the time of storm. Simple as that. That no matter what storm we are facing, God is a shelter, a very present help in the time of storm. Though the earth gives way, though there's wars, chaos, crisis, whatever it is you are facing, God is a shelter for that. In other words, whatever you are facing in your life, God can bring you through. Why? Because he is what? A shelter. It's not difficult. However, I, I, I felt led by the Lord to, to, to change the perspective a little bit. When we've been going through Psalm 46 the past two weeks, we, we've been looking at it from, if you will, uh, 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 Israel's point of view, where Israel needs to find a shelter. Uh, but I believe that we need to change it maybe and look at this from God's point of view. We've been looking at it from Israel's point of view where they are in the middle of something because they need, in the middle of a crisis, so they need a shelter. But I, I believe that we need to, I believe that God wants us to kind of switch, uh, go from the micro to the macro, and we need to look at this from God's perspective. Uh, verses 6 through 10, uh, uh, and the reason why I, 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 I read it is because the picture of 6 through 10 describes God literally causing all war and all crisis to cease. 
That's why the text says, though uh, he utters his voice, God speaks, and what happens? The earth melts. He breaks the bows and the spears by the word of God's power. God says, I can literally crush everything. Y'all remember me talking about this? I can crush everything and stop anything that is happening in your life. That's why he says, be still and know that I am God. He's literally saying, stop the fighting because I am sovereign. I have all power over all these things. Here's where I, we have to, I have to pose a question. If God has all power to stop chaos in our lives, then why doesn't he? That's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the macro of it. Because from, from the Israel standpoint, it's, we, 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 we understand we get a shelter, but from God's standpoint... You have, God has all power in his hands. There's nothing he cannot do. What, what? By the word of his power, God can literally stop anything. Matthew 8, 27, this is why the disciples looked at Jesus after he said, peace be still. They said, what sort of man is this that even the wind and seas obey him? Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Whatever God does, who can undo it? He's the creator of every living thing. He can stop anything by his word. And yet and still, many of you have come in here today and you are still dealing with this storm that God can stop at any given moment. And it makes you ask, God, why is it that you have allowed this storm? You have all power. Why don't you stop this? And I believe that God is, is challenging us to say, I, I don't just have power, I don't just have power to protect you from your storm, but even your storm is, is, is moving by my beck and call. Your storm, not, not just the shelter, I want you to understand, God is not fighting against the, the, the circumstances in your life. Oh no, but God says, I have all control over every aspect of your life. God says, I'm not just the God of the shelter, but God says, even the storm is orchestrated by me. Woo. Preach, Pastor Covington. I'm doing my best. See, it, it would be, now, now here's where the encouragement comes in. It would be one thing if your greatest enemy had control over your storms. But it's something totally different when God does. See, see, God is gracious. God is kind. God is faithful. God is full of grace. God loves us with an everlasting love. God is a good father. He is the author and finisher of our faith. And if these are the attributes of God that he acts out towards me, then whatever happens in my life, I can trust him. Can you? I love how, thank you, Lord, I love it, how Job said it. Job said, can we, tr can we uh, 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 trust the, the, even the pain of God? When God brings a storm in your life, do we have enough faith to look at the storm and say, even this has a purpose? Even God has a purpose and a plan for even the pain in my life. God, can we look at the storm and say, God is working the storm for my good? Can we look at the storm and say, God is going to use this storm to increase my faith? This is not blind optimism. This isn't just something that I say to make myself feel good. But by faith, can we look at even life's uh, biggest obstacles and say, God is still in control? Yes, the storm is deadly, but we must trust that God has a purpose for why he has allowed it. I'm simply arguing that God is in control of you, the storm that you are in. And we can take courage and trust that even in the midst of our storm, God knows what he's doing. And if, and if God knows what he's doing, can I, can I, can, do you mind if I encourage you? Whatever storm you are facing. I'm, and I'm, and I, got, I got three points. I'm going to be 15 minutes and I'm gone. For real. Usually I know I say 15 minutes and it ends up being 45. But for real, this time I'm going to be 15 minutes if the Lord will allow. Look at verses 1 through 3. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. I, I said this last week, or now that we found ourselves in a little mini-series here, the, the picture that the psalmist is painting is one of a catastrophic event, Brother K-1. When, 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 the, when they said that the mountains were shaking, 
uh, uh, in the Near East, what they believe is that uh, 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 that the, the mountains were, back when they believe, the, uh, some people believe that the mountains were, y'all remember this, the pillars of the earth. The pillars of the earth. And so the mountains were the pillars of the earth, and, and, this, and these mountains were holding up the sky. Y'all remember that? Holding up the sky. And so when the mountains began to shake and this catastrophic event began to take place, the people began to get scared and say, the sky is falling. And so, when, and so they believed the sky was falling. And in other words, they believed their world was about to collapse. I said this last week. And certainly there have been many of you that came in and they said, my sky is falling. My world is about to collapse. But, but again... Let's look at this from the right God, well, from a godly perspective. The truth of the matter is God has all power to keep your world from collapsing. And yet for some of us, it's still collapsing. Because God, true, uh, strong, strong truth, God has allowed it to collapse. Lord, why do you allow certain tragedies to take place in our lives? Why do you allow certain sicknesses and diseases to rampage through our world and communities? Why do you allow these things to take place? And I'm not just talking about, uh, I'm not, and now hear me, I'm not talking about the, the things that you incurred upon yourself because you, that, that can't happen. You can incur storms on yourself because of your own sin. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about the things that you had no hand in, you didn't, that came out of nowhere, you knew nothing about. And they're here in your life and you're saying, God, why? Well, we may never understand the circumstance, but, 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 but we have to learn from godly perspective to trust God's character even in the midst of the circumstance. It, 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 and here's the dilemma that we always face, and this is why I said we have, to, we have to look at the storm and say, I still trust God. Why? Because the dilemma is always, where the wrestle we always have is my circumstance versus the character of God. Here, here's the challenge. Can I trust God and still believe he's in control even if my world is crashing down? That's, that's, that's the truth. It, it's, it's easy to trust in God when you can see a way out. But when there is no way. It, it, it's, it's, hard to, to see, it's hard to trust him. And the, and the challenge for us is can you still believe God is in control when it seems like your world is out of control? I would argue that this is what Psalm 46 is saying. Though the earth gives way, we will not fear because of who God is, not because of the storm. I know who's in control of the storm, so I'm not going to worry about who's in control. Uh, I'm not going to worry about the effects of the storm because I know the character behind the one who allowed it to happen. We, we have to learn to trust God's character even when it seems like he's hiding his face. We have to learn to trust God's power when it seems like he's running out of it. And he never will, by the way. We need to learn how to trust God's providence when it seems like I'm running out of resources. And he'll never, by the way. Though our world is collapsing, we have to believe that even the world is in his hands. Let me say it this way. We, we walk by faith and not by sight. We say that all the time, but... But, but there will be times in your life where you need to walk that out, and we'll get to that in a minute. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I, we have to have faith in the character of God. And watch me, watch this. And as long as God is still God, yeah, man, my feelings won't dictate my faith. And if, if God is still God, then his promises will always override my problems. I'm preaching and y'all looking at me. That's okay. I'm going to keep going. As long as God is still God, that means at any given moment, he can turn my situation around. As long as God is still God, if my world is collapsing, he can put it back together again. We have got to have faith to believe that as long as God is on the throne, as long as God is all powerful, as long as he's all knowing, as long as he's still omnipotent, as long as God still be God. I have faith and believe in his character no matter what I face, which is why verse 2 says, therefore, we will not fear. Because, the, God, we, we may look at the storm and they say, and you look at the storm and we see all the things that it is doing in our lives, but we have faith enough to look at the storm and say, even you have a master. And his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. 
I'm, I'm, I'm on my second point. I'm going to leave you alone. I'm almost done. If God has allowed our storm, we must have faith in God's character. However, I also have to trust. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, you can take this home with you. It's easy to remember. If God brought you to it, he'll bring me. No, oh, somebody got All right, all right. We're not, we're not totally sleep. Uh, he'll bring me through. Look at verse 4 and 5. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. Verses 4 and 5, we already know this, depict Jerusalem having a river in the city that nourishes and sustains the people in the city of Jerusalem. However, as, as I said before, and it's, I, I just find it ironic, uh, Pastor Rell, there's no river, physical river, in the city of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. You can go right now, I looked it up, you can find it right now. There is no river in the city of Jerusalem. Well, what is the, this text talking about? They're talking metaphorically. There is no river in the city of Jerusalem, but there is a temple. And in that temple, during that time, that is where the presence of God resided. That's where the presence of God dwelt. And what they were saying simply was that the people would go into the presence of God. They would, that's where they would find their sustenance. That's where they would find their, uh, uh, their vitality. That's where they would find everything they needed to get through the storm. It was the presence of God. And so the, the river that made the, uh, that made the city of God, that made the people of God glad wasn't necessarily a river, but it was, if you will, the fountain of life. It was the bread of heaven. It was God, his presence himself. So, uh, if I can put it to you this way, the presence of God is the shelter of God. Y'all remember me saying that? The presence of God is the shelter of God. His presence is what assured his safety. That's the, 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 uh, the shelter of the most high God. And if I can put it practically, uh, it is, if you will, uh, your time with God where you find your shelter. Oh, man. It, it is the word of God. It is your worship. It's your prayer life. It, it's, it's your personal time with God that gets you through your storm. That's your daily devotions, your quiet time, your prayer life, the worship songs you sing. That's how God brings you through your storm. This is why I said if God brought you to it, he'll bring you through it. Well, Pastor, what does what is, what is he give me to get through it? I just told you, your daily devotions. Your, your prayer time, your, the word of God, your, your worship, your personal time with God. What I love about God is God will never give you a storm that you can't handle. He's never going to send you into something without giving you what you need to, to sustain you through that storm. If God brings you to it, then he's going to give you what you need to get through it. Now, here's where the challenge happens. Uh, uh, there's a little a caveat here. There's an asterisk that I got to add to this because though God has given you a shelter, that doesn't mean you're going to go to it. That doesn't mean you're going to run to your devotions all the time. That doesn't mean just because the shelter is there doesn't mean you run into the shelter. And I said this last week, so I'm not going to well, I'm not going to stay on that. But but I also. This is going to hurt. This is going to, it's going to step on some toes. But the storm is also a proving ground. What do you mean, Pastor? Maybe this storm is here to test and see, do you really believe in everything that Pastor is saying up here? Dude, Psalm 46 says, God is a shelter in the time of storm. Do you really believe that? Because you don't know. Or you don't, if you will, you won't live that out until a storm comes. It's not until a storm comes until, until you actually, actually use your emergency resources. It takes a storm for you to actually live this thing out. It, it, and, and maybe this storm is here to test and see how will you respond. When crisis comes into your life, it's the proving ground. Why is it the proving ground? To prove and see, are you really believing what you are singing? When you say, how great is our God, do you really believe that? 
When you say God will hide me from the rain, do you really believe that? When you say God will provide for me in every situation, do you believe it? Because the storm is the opportunity to see. It's that moment where your faith has flesh and you've got to live it out. <sighs> Will you run to the presence of God when the storm comes? Will you run to your prayer life? Will you run to the word of God? Will you run to worship or will you run to your vices? You see, the shelter is a proving ground to see, do you really believe what you hear in church? Or has pastor preached for 16 months on YouTube and you have nothing to show for it? I'm kidding. <laughs> well, do, do you really believe that? It's the storm. And many of you are saying, God, why am I in this storm? And God is saying, I've given you all you need to, to, to go into the storm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Sister Covington, you appreciate this. Any good teacher will tell you that they have to teach you the material correctly before they give a test. <laughs> they, you, 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 a, a terrible teacher gives you a test that they didn't prepare you for. But a good teacher says, I've given you the study guide. I've given you the spark notes. I've sent letters to your, to your parents. I've given you everything you needed to take this test. I've given you everything, and yet you still fail. How is that? You can't blame the teacher. Why? Because I gave you all that you need. And so when the storm comes, or if you will, the test comes, how will you respond? It's the proving ground. The shelter. And, and, and the shelter of God is where you are supposed to go. But I, can I go a step further before I turn it loose? I got one more, two more after this, and then I'm done. Here's the first one. It's not only a proving ground, but it's an opportunity. What's the opportunity? The, 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 there's an opportunity for you to stand on the promises of God. This is an opportunity right here, right here in the middle of this chaos that you are seeing. This is your opportunity to trust him. Why is it an opportunity? Because this is the opportunity for you to grow your faith. This is your opportunity to say, I tried him and he proved that he'll never fail me. Nobody wants to go through anything. We just want everything to be all right. But God says, no, this is right here. This is the time. Will you trust me? I'm preaching to you as I'm preaching to myself. Will you trust me in the midst of what is going on in your life? This is the opportunity to say, God, I want to trust you. I want, I want to, I want to watch this. I want to stand on your promises and see you pull me through. Ah, help me, Holy Spirit. So many of us decide that we are just going to sin until God brings us out. God says, how about you just wait on me and trust me while I bring you out? Why don't you trust God while he brings you out? Don't, 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 uh, I'm going to get in trouble. Don't try and numb your way through this. Don't just look and say, oh, I'm just going to go left and right, abuse God's grace, and then when God lets me out, I'll shout all day long. No, no, don't squander your testimony. Woo! I'm preaching right. Don't squander your testimony. Trust God. Stay in it. Don't miss your opportunity. This is the time to be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. This, this, this is the time where you say, I will trust the Lord with all my heart. I won't lean on my own understanding. In all my ways, I will acknowledge him and he'll direct my path. In the midst of my storm, I believe God will provide no shortcuts, no sins. Tell the devil he can go to hell. Literally, I'm going to stand on God's word. Yes, Pastor. Yes, sir. For those of you that weren't here last week, hunker down. Yes, sir. I can't do it there too long because I might find myself on the floor again. Hunker down in God's word. For those of you that don't know what hunker down means, it means it's a position where you just stay and you don't move. You stay and you don't move. You trust in God. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Don't miss this opportunity to trust God. We walk by faith and not by sight. We have faith in God's character in the storm. We, we, we live out our faith by running to the presence of God in our devotions, worship, and prayer life. Here it is. This is the one you don't like, but here it is. Finally, we trust God's timing. We trust God's timing. Verse 6 and 10, that's the first thing I read. I, this is really my sermon right here. Uh, everything else was just I, I added caveats. Uh, but, 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 but verse 6 through 10 shows us again 
that God has all power to stop chaos and crisis in our lives. And if he does, then again, if God has all power to stop the chaos, he decides not to. Well, watch me. If I trust the God of the storm, if I trust his character, who he is, then I trust how long he'll leave me in the storm. That's the part we don't like because we want to get out right now. But God says, will you trust me? Trust me long enough to stay in the storm. Y'all excuse me. Uh, the Lord is, the Lord is, is, is speaking. Listen, listen. Uh, do you remember the story of Abraham and Isaac? Abraham and Isaac. Abraham and Isaac. Uh, 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 God looked at Abraham and said, Abraham, sacrifice Isaac. My only promise, Abraham's only promised son. Uh, I love, I love Abraham because Abraham looked at his guy, looked at his uh, his servants, and he said, "Listen," he said, "We're going up to the mountain." He says, "Me and the boy will be back." I love it. You know, j just right there, he said, "Me and the boy will be back." So much faith, even in that moment. But that's not my point. I got to keep going. He, he, and what happens? What I love about Isaac, huh? Isaac already knows what a sacrifice looks like. Dad, where is the rain? And, Isaac, and, and Abraham says, God will provide. But it's not Abraham I want to focus on, it's Isaac. Because the text says that Abraham lifted his knife. Well, where was Isaac, can one? He was on the altar. Isaac had to lay down on the altar. <gasps> Isaac, how long were you on the altar? <gasps> Before you side side. wait a minute, Are he, is he really going to let this happen for this long? Some of us are in storms in our lives and we're laying down like Isaac. And God is saying, God, are you really going to let this happen? But Isaac stayed right there and said, Lord, if this is y'all not talking to me. Lord, this a life looks like it's going to go into my heart, but if this is where you'll have me, I trust you. The text said that Isaac stayed there the entire time. Isaac didn't fight Abraham. Isaac didn't uh, tell him, put that knife away, it was nothing. But Isaac laid right there on the altar. <sighs> Do you trust God enough to say, however long you have me laying here? Yes, I'll sir. Well, will you trust God enough to say, I won't move until you tell me to get up? Go ahead, preacher. Will, will you trust God enough to say, I'm not going to move? Until you call my name. Until you speak. Go ahead, preacher. You don't believe me. Uh, uh, Elijah, in 1 Kings chapter 17, the text says that Elijah was in the middle of a drive in the book of, brook of Cherith. And he was, uh, uh, if you will, uh, well, uh, he was uh, drinking from the brook of Cherith. And the ravens were coming to him. And after a while, the ravens stopped coming. And the text says, I believe it's verse 7 or verse 8, Pastor Durrell. It preacher. says... And the brook dried up. Yes, sir. <laughs> now, watch me. Clearly. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God, thank you, Lord. The, the brook dried up. But what I love about it is between verse 8 and the next verse, the, it, it says, then God spoke. Yeah. Pastor, what's your point? And uh, it's clear that the brook dried up. All evidence says it's time to leave. But Elijah said, I won't move. Until I hear the word of the Lord. Hear, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. We walk by faith, not by sight. We don't move based on our circumstance. We move by the word of the Lord. We move by the word of God. You don't, we don't move just because everything and anything says move. We move when God says move. You don't believe me. One more and then I'll let you go. Noah was on the ark for a quarantine for a year. You thought you had a bad quarantine? He was quarantining himself on the boat for almost a year. Look it up. Add it up. It's almost a year. 360. I believe it was like five, uh, 360 days. Something along that. And for those of you that remember, we talked about this over the time of COVID. Noah was in quarantine on a boat for a long period of time. And the text says that he looked out and saw that there was no water on the ground. But yet and still, he did not open his door. He stayed there. And then the text says, then the word of the Lord came. We don't move by our circumstances. Money might not be right. People may not be right. Jobs may be messed up. But we don't cut off. We don't move. We don't do anything until God speaks. Even if the brook dries up, we have to have faith enough to say, the Lord is either going to 
to bring this book back or he's going to send me somewhere else. Until then, I'll be right here. Do we have faith? And this is the challenge. We've got to have faith to say, I trust God no matter what. And if, 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 if I, I'm going to wait on him, this is why, Psalm 4610, be still and know that I am God. I, I'm done. I'm done. Well, Pastor, what am I waiting on? I'm waiting on God to speak. I'm waiting on God to speak. Don't move until God speaks. Don't go anywhere until God speaks. He'll speak. He'll talk. He'll tell you when to go. But, 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 I, as I said before, and I'm not going to get excited. I, I'm done. Stay in his will. Stay in his will. Psalm, Psalm 62, 5 and 8. For God alone, O oh my soul, wait in silence, for my hope is, in, is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my salvation and my glory, my mighty rock. My refuge is God. Trust in him at all times, O oh people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Even your storm has a master. And you've got to learn to look at your storm and say, I trust God. It hurts, but I trust him. I don't like what I'm looking at, but I trust him. And I'm not going to move until he, until he says no. So, uh, we uh, let the church say amen. Okay, well, if you don't mind, let the church say amen. Um, um, some of you have been, some of you ready to move a job and God didn't tell you to move yet. Some of you, some of y'all ready to cut off friends and God says, no, I need you to labor with them a little while longer. Some of you are ready to cut off family members and God said, I never said that. I don't know. Hear me. I am not saying God is saying don't do it at all. I'm saying, God is saying, not yet. Hear me, hear me, and I'm done. Don't go ahead of God. But, but don't wait too long either. Some of us, God has been told us to do something, and we've been, we have to move. Hear me, it goes both ways. God is saying, some, some, some of us need to speed up. Some of us need to slow down. It's both. God is saying, you, you, when I say move, you move. That's when you move. That's when you go. That's when you. That's when it takes place. Some of us need to speed up. God been told us what we need to do, and we need to, and we need to move now. If you're looking for the word of the Lord, here it is right now. Move now. There it is. But if some of us need to wait, you need to wait. Not because God isn't saying no, or God is saying delay is not denied, or God is God is not saying don't go. God is saying, just not yet. This storm is doing something in your life. This storm is changing something in your life. You are, you are seeing things. Hallelujah. Sorry, I'm speaking to myself as I'm speaking to you. You are seeing things. You are seeing people differently. You are handling things differently. You are maturing in God in ways you've never seen before in your life. And that's what the storm is here for. The storm ain't about you getting money in a new 401k. The storm is about your spiritual growth in Christ. And God is trying to mature you around people, mature you around your family, and mature you around your faith. When you talk to people, giving them the gospel of Jesus Christ, God says, I'm trying to grow you. This ain't about your friendship that you had for 20 years. This is about how you handle your friends in Christ. This ain't about how you give your work ethic. This is about how you handle leaving a job and doing it in a God-honoring way. God says, I'm trying to grow you. I'm somewhere, I'm somewhere else. God says, don't get this mixed up. I'm trying to grow your trust in me. Does that make sense? Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Stand here, God. Thank you for listening to the word. We're praying that the word of God edified you. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your savior, uh, we want to invite you. We want to invite you to know Christ as your Savior. A couple of things that we need to do here is simple is that uh, you need, we need to confess our sins. Uh, uh, confess and say, Lord, I have sinned in my life. 
and I need that sin removed. And the only way that that sin can be removed is when we confess that Jesus is Lord, that he died for our sins, and he was resurrected and is seated at the right hand of the Father. So you simply just need to say, Lord, I have sins. Forgive me for those sins. I receive you as Savior, and I believe by faith that you are Lord and that you are the Lord of my life, and you have redeemed me from my sins. And just like that, you have salvation. Just like that, you know the Lord for yourself. Uh, one thing that we've learned, uh, and, and we know at Union here at our church, uh, uh, we would uh, uh, we would love for you to be a part of our church. But at the same time, um, if you wish to go to another church or you want uh, uh, know someone else, that's fine too. But one thing is certain, and, and uh, you don't have to be here to be saved. Uh, you know the Lord for yourself. So uh, if you have any uh, questions or concerns, I would uh, advise you to go to our email. Uh, our email is unionbaptist.southriverNJ at gmail.com. That's unionbaptist.southriverNJ at gmail.com. Dot com. If you have any questions, concerns, or if you just, uh, uh, even during this pandemic, you want to reach out and say, I want to be a part of this great church, you can do that as well. And we will contact, be in contact with you, and uh, we'll give you information on how to join the church and whatnot. Amen. I pray all is well with you. Uh, grace and peace.